and welcome back to The Sim. In this one, we're going to take a quick look at how to do acceleration manually with joysticks that don't have those options here in Spad Next. Let's jump into the cockpit of the working title CJ4 and see how we can do this using the Bravo. If you haven't already looked at how to configure the Bravo for the working title CJ4, I highly recommend you look at those videos separately uh, and do that before continuing on here. We're literally just going to highlight this ability to manually create our own acceleration and how we did it with the Bravo. So I'm going to go into heading mode on the Bravo by turning the knob on the left to the heading position. And now when we turn the encoder on the Bravo, we have our normal moving the heading by one. But now when I start to spin it, I've got it set so that it will increment in tens. Then if we wait a moment, you'll see it goes back to incrementing by ones. But if we just start spinning it quickly, you get those fast increments. We did the exact same with our altitude. So here, if I wanted to go up higher, I could go select the altitude selector. And now you'll see when we spin that knob, it starts incrementing by 500s instead of hundreds. So highlighting what we've done is we've gone to buttons 13 and 14, which from the other video you will recall, that is the right side knob, the mode increment decrement knob. Whereas button 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21 is the selector knob on the left. So as we move the left side selector knob, you see those different lights turn on. And then if we are moving the encoder clockwise, 13 triggers, counterclockwise, 14 triggers. So previously we just had one event with a condition. So now what we've done is we've added a simple event. So we went in and we said add event, button pressed, and we added some actions. So the actions you'll see we added is we created a local variable. So we went add action, change data value, and we created a new local variable. And the local variable we created was called Bravo flag. It's a flag I'm using on my Bravo. I don't know, name it whatever you want. And what we want to do is on button press every time it's going to set this value to one. Then it will wait 200 milliseconds and it will set the flag back to zero. So this is creating our timer. So looking at heading first, which is when button 19 is a one. So that needs the encoder or the rotary selector, I should say on the left that needs to be in the heading position which happens to be button 19. So when that's a one and the Bravo flag is a zero it's going to increment by one. Now these things are firing off so fast that as long as you just move the knob in a single increment the heading moves by one because it's processing that the Bravo flag is a zero on that first click. And if you wait two tenths of a second, 200 milliseconds before turning it again, it will not accelerate as the Bravo flag will reset to zero. So we're just incrementing by ones. Now, if you start turning it quickly, it will now start jumping because now the Bravo flag is not equal to zero. Instead, now it's going to have that both 19 is a one and the Bravo flag is a one. 
And now we are incrementing our autopilot heading lock direction one, because remember working title CJ4 has to use the slot one indexes, and that's jumping it by 10. So we went ahead and we did the same thing. We copied each event and made a second instance of it. And now we're using these conditional events and you see it's an and because when we added the, the extra condition, so we hit add and we went for our Bravo flag, we had the condition set to and. So with these two things meeting, so in case it's button 20, so there button 20, which is the VS selector. Well, now when we're setting our VS mode, we will be doing it by 500 instead of when it's a zero and it's 100. That's all we had to do. Once I rebuilt all this, I did a copy all events. So it copied every single one of these events. I went to 14 and I pasted it all and replaced everything. And then I just came in and I went to each event and I changed it from increment to decrement. And I did that for all of them. Now, we can't speed up the course because we're sending an event for this. Now, the choice for this was because when you're in your different modes, the one course knob will work. This sends the key event, which spins the course one knob. So it's whatever is assigned in your PFD. So that won't accelerate, but I duplicated it so that it had it in both states. We could have not had it even looked at the, Brav the Bravo profile flag, just had it using the device, that also would have worked. But I wanted to duplicate things in case in the future we decide to change this over and use different data. For heading lock, we're doing ones and tens decreasing, autopilot vertical hold, 100s and 500s, and 100s and 500s for your altitude. Now, if you want a longer timeout, so it stays there longer, just go in and change all of those pauses, which is only here. If you want it to be longer before it sets it back to zero, make this a higher number. If you want it quicker, set this to a lower, set this to 200 milliseconds, and then it won't kick in as quickly on you. Well, guys, at this point, I think we're just going to go ahead and get out of here. This one was meant to be really quick on how to create our own acceleration and how to create our own events on any type of a controller. If you liked it, go ahead, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't and come along next time when we'll probably be doing something fun and exciting again. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.